Hey everyone, hope you're all doing well. Today I want to do a little bit of a relaxed video, no script really, just chill. I recently got access to OpenAI's Codex, which if you haven't heard of this, this is essentially a model that can write code by OpenAI. So you tell it what you want and it writes the code. Now previously they had released another model, I think it was yeah, GitHub Copilot, and I've actually been using Copilot quite a bit. It's like a code completing tool and it can write a lot of code for you and it's actually been very helpful. Now this, and I have the playground open right here, this is their new model, DaVinci Codex. This is the strongest one. It came out I think a month or two ago, but I got access a week or two ago. And I thought you guys might be interested. I know my, my last video on this, lots of people tended to like. So I thought we'd just kind of take it for a spin and see what it can do. So specifically, I wanna see if it can write AI code. Previously, when I tried out Copilot on writing out actual AI code, it did like, okay, you know, not super great, but not super bad. It had some errors I needed to fix, but I could sort of walk it through the process. But this time we're actually gonna be trying a bit more. So let me, let me start off with an example here instead of uh, droning on about this. So if we put like a little comment here and let me go ahead and zoom this in for everyone watching. If we zoom this in, hopefully that's big enough, we can say something like print out hello world. And you can see I've set this to Python down here. You can actually use lots of different languages, which is quite nice. So if we just submit this, hopefully it should complete our code for us and <laughs> we get it several times and we can adjust the parameters here. For example, we could have made the response length less for this, but that's essentially what we wanted, right? Uh, we can submit that. And then what I'm gonna do after we submit it is I'm gonna pull a visual Studio Code. So you see here, I have a Visual Studio Code tab pulled up. So whatever this generates in here, we can't actually run it. So I'll just copy it over to here and we'll try running it just to make sure this stuff actually works after we give it a little look over. So for example, here I can copy over uh, this print world and we can go ahead and run that just like that. And we can see we got a hello world. Very nice, very nice. So we're actually gonna start off right off the bat with something not too easy though. Now we're gonna start off kind of simple and get a bit harder. So if you do wanna just skip to the harder stuff like classification and real ML stuff, do feel free to skip ahead. But you know, let's, let's make sure it works before we get to that because we might not get to that part of the video, I don't know. So we're gonna make a block comment here. And what I want to try and do first is create an example of linear regression. So we can define this by saying create, and I haven't tried this in advance, by the way, so I don't know if it's gonna work or not. Uh, so create an example linear regressor using PyTorch. Uh, using PyTorch will make it a little bit easier, so we'll give it a little handicap. Uh, create the X and Y, uh, I guess, input and outputs. The next thing we're gonna need to do is create the weight vector as a tensor. And then the third thing is run a learning loop and fit the regressor with, and we're just gonna use uh, stochastic gradient descent. Not that we would need to, uh, but it's just an easy way to do it. We should also test the accuracy and print the results. Now, <laughs> again, I'm a little scared here. I, I did play around with this a little bit, but I haven't really done anything that's complicated. So let's move up the response length as you see here on the right if it's too low we're not going to get a full thing what I don't, i'm not sure what's really good maybe we hit, hit it up to actually we can we don't have to go that high because if it doesn't generate enough we can always just hit submit again now these other things like the temperature and stuff it's probably for the best for now that we just don't change that and go ahead and see what we get let's see import torch okay okay x's and y's oh wow wow it's doing a lot of stuff it's commenting for us too, very nice. So let's let's go back and see what it did. So if you don't know what linear regression is, um, well, uh, I'm not sure this is the best video for you, but a quick explanation, it's just trying to take in these variables x and trying to learn a function, a linear function that maps them to y. So in this case, it looks like it created four inputs each. One goes to two, two to four, three to six, and four to eight. The This is clearly, you know, they're just multiplying the x times two to get the y, makes sense. Now the weights, it looks like they're being initialized to zero, requires a grade, that's good. Seeing so, you know, a learning rate, uh, creating that uh, stochastic gradient descent optimizer, defining the loss as MSE, that's good. That's what we want. And looping for 1000 iterations. So it clears the gradient. What's MM? I believe that's matrix multiplication, which would be right. We get our prediction, put it through the loss function and then do back propagation. And this, 
Um, this looks right to me. I think <laughs> I think this is correct. So let's go ahead and we are going to paste this in here. And I, I'm curious if you haven't, oh, I wonder if I can zoom in for you all. There we go. Uh, sorry, this is a bit cl clustered up here. Uh, so take your guess in the comments before each of these, what you thought before uh, you, you actually saw me ran these. I think it's gonna work. So let's do Python test.py. Now, if it does work, we should say, what will we get? Well, we'll print out the predictions and the predictions should match, right? They should match what we have here or be very close to it. And then the loss should be as close to zero as possible. And the weights, I don't know what the weights will be. They, they could, oh, I guess the weights will just be two, right? We'll hopefully get a, let's see the weights. We just have one weight. So this is actually interesting, right? One weight means that there's no biases here. So that's not ideal, but technically this is still, well, is it? I'm not sure if that's still, I guess it is still linear regression. Oh no, oh no, this isn't good. We ended up with, in a n i wonder why that is actually what let's try looping for less steps maybe that's the issue although i still don't know oh oh my that's quite the way yeah these weights are just absolutely exploding what are we trying to do we're trying to loss dot backwards loss function is in let me see loss um hmm let me cut out real quick and I'll be back once I figure out what's wrong with this. I honestly thought this was going to work. Um, yeah, so I'll be, I'll be right back once I figure that out. Okay, I'm back and I did find the error. It didn't take me too long. And the error is actually very simple. There's one error that makes all of this work when we fix it. And that's that you see, we created the learning rate right up here, but we never actually used it down here. So if we just go ahead and multiply this by the learning rate, we should be fine. So if we go ahead and run this, you can see we get out loss is almost zero and we're printing out almost four, almost six and almost eight. So that is, that's really good. The issue was essentially that we were updating by too much and the changes were, we were essentially bouncing back and forth too high, too low, too high, too low. And the numbers just kept getting bigger and bigger. So minor mistake, oh, you know, I'll give it the pass on this. This was, this was pretty good, I'd say. Now, the question is, can we do better? Can we do better? So let's go ahead and delete this. That's pretty impressive, linear regression, one minor mistake. So what we want to try to do next is, what I kind of had in mind is computer vision, specifically using MNIST. Now MNIST, if you don't know it, I can look it up right now, MNIST data set. It's a data set of handwritten digits. And what people often do is they download this, they look at the images and they try and predict which image is which or what number each image is based on the image itself. So here I would predict a one, here a three, here a nine, here a zero and so on, right? It's sort of an intro task for lots of people learning ML and that's why I thought it would be an interesting thing to do. It's not too simple, it's not like linear regression, but it's not too difficult either. So we're stepping up the difficulty a little bit. So let's download the MNIST data set will be our step one. Two will be implement, implement a feed forward neural network classifier using PyTorch. Again, we'll use PyTorch because that's what I like. Then train the classifier on the MNIST data to predict digit classes. So we'll throw in our training data and predict digits. And the last thing we'll do is test the accuracy of the classifier. And I'm gonna put here, download the MNIST data set, if not already downloaded. Downloaded. Now, this is a bit harder, not only because it needs to do this, it also needs to download the data set now. So I'm, I'm hoping it just happens to know where to find it. It's a very famous data set. So I'm hoping that will be the case to me to do that. So let's go ahead and submit. Let's go ahead and submit. So it does its imports again. Uh, data set, okay, I see. So it's grabbing it from, okay, let's let it finish. Let's let it finish. Okay, so let's submit again. We didn't get to the end, it looks like. Okay, this all looks like very familiar stuff. Oh, they're doing it fancy with a data loader too. Ooh. Almost, almost. One more time. And, oh, it's evaluating too. I didn't even ask it to evaluate. 
So it's, it's going above and beyond. That might have been the end of it, but let's try one more time. Yeah, that's the end. So this is a lot. Let's go, let's go through this just a little bit, see what's going on. So we have our imports, we get a data loader. Now, yeah, datasets.mmis. So this is built into the datasets uh, module, which I'm not surprised by. As a matter of fact, I'm sure I've used this in the past. So then this is our neural network. It looks like it's doing a standard fully connected network using linear layers. That's fine. I didn't specify for it to be a convolutional layer or anything. And we're just passing it through, passing it through. Do a log softmax. Okay, makes sense. Should it be just a normal sum? I'm sure that's fine. I'm sure it's fine. So we create our model, then we have our loss, our optimizer, some parameters, and then we load in our data. So these are loaders. Did we not already do this? Datasets.ms. So this is a data set and this is a data loader. Okay, a little bit different. And then we loop through the epochs, set the model to train. Let's see, grab our batch data, send it to the target device. And what did it set the device to? It's to device. Did it set the device to anything specific? I don't think it did. So I think that's an error we're going to run into, but we'll see. We'll see. And what does it do after that? It does the zero grad, throws the model, uh, sorry, throws the data into our model, calculates the loss, and also keeps a running loss. That's nice for, I'm sure, metrics. Then back propagates and prints out how it's doing. Then it puts into eval mode finally, and yeah, does an evaluation. It looks like pretty much the same thing. So this might work except for I'm, I'm not i'm worried about that device maybe i overlooked it but let's copy and paste this over here and see if it works let's see if it works what's the worst that could happen okay so it's downloading the data that's that's a good start It'd be hilarious if it like wrote some virus that took it from my yeah, device is not defined okay so that's about what i expected we can go ahead and define that uh we can just say something like we're just going to do device equals uh, CUDA. Hopefully I can record a video and do this at the same time. I'm sure it'll be fine. Sure it'll be fine. So let's see how this works now. Okay, so that's not good. Looks like the MAT2 was on the CPU. Yeah, okay, I see what's happening here. So we're creating our network, right? But it's not moving it to a device. However, it is moving the training data to a device. So instead, let's just do the CPU to make it easier. That is a bug in this, but I'll, I'll let it pass if it works on the CPU. Mat1 and Mat2 shapes cannot be multiplied. Hmm. Well, that's not very good now, is it? Let's see what it did. So it did 28 times 28 to 512. And then, so it passes it through the FC1, right? And is that the right shape? I think it's the right shape. I don't know if they give it to us like this, uh, but we'll see. I guess that's actually something we can check. Let's let's check the input shape of this. That might be our issue. So print x dot shape. I have a feeling this is going to be the issue. And we can see that the shape is 100 by 1 by 28 by 28. That is indeed the issue. What we're going to want to do is say x equals. Oh, and there's Copilot coming in handy <laughs> using Copilot with uh, with Codex. That's actually kind of hilarious. So we'll reshape it. Normally, I guess we expect this to come in for a comment, but let's see if that fixes it. Need a dimension. I wonder if this is because maybe in an older version, it didn't need a dimension. I'm not entirely certain actually, but, oh, actually, okay. We got epoch one is, is it already done? That's kind of fast for doing it on this. Oh yeah. Oh, the loss is going down. Okay. So this, this might be working. <laughs> this might be working. I guess we would need to double check the loss is just defined as what? Cross entropy loss, that should be good. And for the cross entropy loss, we're putting the uh, output and then the target. Yeah, I mean, this all looks good to me. So let's give it a moment to go ahead and finish this. I'll just talk a little bit about my sort of thoughts on the whole thing while we go through this because yeah, Codex, Codex and GitHub Copilot, which came out in very rapid succession, by the way, have really been incredible. I think when they first came out, I was like, this is probably gonna be a ways away from actually you know, being usable. Uh, I was wrong. I was quite a bit wrong on that front. I've actually been using Copilot over the last like month or two 
And you know, it doesn't do the heavy lifting for me, but if I just want to do some quick work or I forget like how a, like what a, or if I forget like what I, or I know what I wanna do, but I forget what function does it, it can be very easy to just sort of put in a quick little thing, like a quick little comment and let Copilot figure it out for me. And it's it's definitely sped my, my uh, process up. This looks like it's done though. And we got an accuracy of 94%. Wow, not too bad, not too bad. So what were the issues here? There was the device issue that we didn't have and there was this issue of resizing the input. But overall, I mean, that was really impressive. <laughs> Can, you know, this is something that uh, most computer science students, if you're, if you're like focusing on AI in your undergrad, probably don't do something like this until your third year usually, maybe fourth year. Some people don't even start this stuff until grad or, or they go into industry. So I'm not saying you can't do it much earlier. I know high schoolers that work on this too. So it depends, but you know, this isn't an easy thing to do. So it's I'm impressed by this model. I'm very impressed. As I said, I already use GitHub Copilot and I'm excited to see where this goes. This has really sped up my coding and maybe that's a video that might make like an interesting sort of it may, might be an interesting video, right? Sort of seeing how fast it speeds up my process. So trying to code something, uh, uh, just doing it by myself versus with Copilot. Let me know if that's something you're interested in seeing in the comments, or if you wanna see a follow-up on this, maybe we can do some more complicated stuff. For example, machine translation or more complex like uh, vision stuff like image segmentation. If you're interested in any of that sort of thing or reinforcement learning, whatever it may be, do let me know. But anyway, that's all I have for this time. So I just want to thank you all so much for watching and I hope to catch you next time.